Hello, Wayne Keith here, professor of physics and astronomy at McMurray University. Everyone is talking about the image of a black hole that came out April 10th. You've probably seen it, a small fuzzy orange donut with a dark center. It may not look like much, but this image represents years of work and a technological feat that was once thought to be impossible. First, let's talk about the resolving power of a telescope, the smallest angular size that we can see in the sky. Astronomers use angular size because that's what's important when you look at something and try to see the details. A 4-inch screen is perfectly fine for watching a movie if it's 18 inches from your face, but too small to see much from across the room. A TV you would watch from across the room is much bigger, maybe 60 inches or so, but even that wouldn't look very good from the back of a large auditorium. And a cell phone screen from that distance wouldn't be much more than a point of light. So even though a supermassive black hole is extremely huge, Bigger than our entire solar system, it's so far away that its angular size is tiny, about the same as a DVD sitting on the moon. Not even the Hubble Space Telescope can see something that small. You'd need a telescope thousands of times better to see it. It turns out that there's a simple mathematical formula to determine the maximum resolving power of a telescope. It depends on the wavelength of light you're using and the diameter of the telescope. To see a black hole at radio wavelengths, you need a telescope the size of the Earth. This does seem impossible, but the formula has a loophole. You don't need the entire circle to be filled in. So the radio signals from telescopes all over the world can be recorded and combined later in a computer to make a virtual telescope as big as the distance between the individual locations. This technique has been used before. It's called interferometry. But this is the most difficult observation that it's been used for. I'm, of course, skipping over a lot of very complicated and important details, but that's the basics of the observation. This is also why scientists try to avoid using terms like photo or snapshot, since the way the image is created is nothing like using a regular camera. It's still just as real. It's just a different way to create the image. So getting back to the actual image here, what are we seeing? You probably know that a black hole has a gravity so strong, not even light can escape. Well, that orange ring is some of the light that almost got too close to the black hole, but managed to squeak past the event horizon and travel to us. They're sometimes called the last orbit photons, because if they got any closer, they couldn't escape. This point is a little ways out from the actual boundary of the black hole, so the dark central spot of the image is a bit larger than the event horizon itself. That's one reason why many of the quotes from scientists call it the shadow of the black hole, since that's really a more accurate way to think of it. This image is important because it's a first, and amazingly, it looks pretty much like what we expected, which tells us that our theories are working pretty well, but it's also just the beginning. Now that we know we can do it, we'll be getting more and better images that will allow us to test and study a lot more of the details about black holes in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Wayne Keith from McMurray University. Thank you.